haven't seen a boxing video in a while. This is the win Mike Tyson petrified Michael Spinks. <laughs> Welcome back to Jump. the Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. I feel my will is invincible. Jesus! On today's video, Good we look God. back at one of the most memorable nights in Tyson's career. A night where boxing skills were put to one side as the raw emotion of anxiety, fear, and intimidation determined the bout's outcome before the first bell. Man, Mike Tyson might be like the one person who like when they train, it looks exactly like how they fight. Like to the like exactly like i feel like people when they train there's like a little something left behind like maybe like one percent two percent but mike tyson there's a video of him there's a video of mike tyson like shadow boxing in the middle of a gym and this man's going crazy he's like 18 mike tyson shadow box he's going absolutely bananas i've never seen such a thing quick Quick detour. So oh, this look at this guy. Oh, this isn't the video, but bro, this fucking guy is just like. Maybe they have the clip in here though. It's just like every time he like trained, anytime he threw a punch, he was fucking lethal. What the fuck? It is crazy. I don't know. I guess all big boxers are like that. But I don't know. Like, Mike Tyson is just like... I guess it's just his look. Like, it's always just been like that. His look just looks crazier. You know? <laughs> like, shit. On today's video, we look back at one of the most memorable nights in Tyson's career. A night where boxing skills were put to one side as the raw emotion of anxiety, fear, and intimidation determined the bout's outcome before the first bell rang. From a psychological aspect, it was one of the most ingenious but ruthless pre-fight strategies the boxing world had ever seen. <laughs> it's that guy. This is guy gets scared, no? Who is he? This guy. <laughs> this guy gets spooked to heavens, I think. Strategies the boxing world had ever seen. <laughs> Let's take a look. If this is the story, I think it is. I think that man just like straight almost calls off the fight, straight shaking in his boots in the back. The most difficult part about um, fighting is the training because, believe it or not, the easy part about fighting is the fighting. Again, a right hand, but he took a right from Tyson. And another big right by Mike Tyson. Being one of the most well-honed, conditioned, and aesthetically pleasing heavyweights in history doesn't boil down to a gift from God or natural talent. In fact, that notion is disrespectful and diminishes the reality of what achieving near boxing perfection takes. Unconditional loyalty to the game, training, and nutrition while setting new standards for what qualifies as hard work. <laughs> 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 A day in the life of Tyson during a training camp started at 4 a.m. No alarm <laughs> clock. His body just Four. rose. After I'm some going to bed. He hits the road for a 10 I'm going run to bed at that time. Before returning what to bed for a quick nap. Once awake, a nutritional breakfast is washed down with a liter of water and a handful of supplements such as magnesium, zinc, vitamin D. I'm going live. By noon, the hard work. 12, I'm eating Strictly lunch. Strictly boxing related work for the next two hours, including mitt work, speed, and heavy back routines. Finished off with 15 rounds of interval sparring against the usual gym rats and James Broad and Oliver McCall. Oh, shit. For lunch, boiled chicken and rice or steak and pasta were the go-tos, often okay. prepared by Custom Auto's wife, Camille, in the morning. To keep his energy okay. levels high, Tyson- Okay, our two o'clock. Our two o'clock time isn't too different. Man's having chicken and rice. That's a classic on the channel. Rice or steak and pasta were the go-tos. Often uh, steak and pasta. By Custom Auto's wife, Camille, in the morning. To keep his energy levels high, Tyson drank natural fruit juices with every meal. Following his lunch, it was back to the gym to practice more boxing drills with Kevin Rooney, often utilizing the slip bag to perfect Tyson's peekaboo style. You have to try to be elusive. See, Damn. as long as the fighter's trying to be elusive, he's going to be all right. That's what I emphasize. That's what I think that's what's most impressive to me about Mike Tyson is that movement. That like peekaboo outside inside. That shit is crazy. The fact he can do this 
for more than 10 minutes. <laughs> the fact you could do this more than, like, two rounds. Whatever. Like, fuck, man. That shit is crazy. Like, he's doing this, and he's fucking giving everything he's got into that. Like, holy fuck. It rans you. Shit's crazy. See, the Monster. The is trying to be elusive, he's gonna be alright. That's what I emphasize. That's what, that's what, uh, that's what we're trying to, that's what we got over everybody else. Mike would then round off his afternoon with an hour of stationary bike work to loosen his muscles before a grueling two-hour bodyweight exercise routine that involved 500 squats, mm. 500 sit-ups, 350 push-ups, and innovative trap and neck workouts to increase his punch resistance until his third and Jesus, final look meal of the day at 7 p.m. Jesus. After dinner, Tyson would often warm down with a light jog or long walk before spending his evening studying his next opponent with Kevin Rooney or consuming media regarding his favorite fighters of the past. By 9 o'clock, it was lights out. And he'd repeat this routine with little variance six days a week for one month straight, leading up to his next fight. My favorite part about training is then when the train is over and then it's time to fight, and I know I'm in supreme shape and there's no one's gonna beat me. This level of high intensity training is rare, even among the all time greats. Yet, just over 1,000 miles away in St. Louis, Missouri, Tyson's next opponent, Michael Spinks, shared an equal desire in preparation for battle. Let me see this guy train. Our what does this guy training. look like? should be harder than what you experience How does he look like when he Spinks's doing it? approach to training was more geared toward extreme conditioning, utilizing newly formed explosive routines to help prepare him for the sport's stop and start element. Explosive? Whether it was boxing or conditioning training, he'd always rest for one minute and then explode until exhaustion for the next three. That made him a machine that could turn up the pace Damn. at any moment over the course. Of I mean, he looked like he put work. And of course, I mean, he needed that was to work. prepare for every fight. That motherfucker like working. Because despite packing the ability to clean some hey. block, he was a natural light heavyweight that could no longer rely on his power to dispatch his opponents. Rather, his work rate and boxing acumen were needed to beat his competitors over the distance, as he had his previous 31 opponents, including the great Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. I have been Damn. hit hard by some heavyweights found no pleasure in it. While Tyson and Spinks were similar in their physical preparation and the credentials they brought to the ring, their personalities and mindsets couldn't have been any further removed. I care that this was love beyond <laughs> Man's more Spinks like a Tyson was an Fury. guy that could find a reason to smile even Man's in the singing. <laughs> moments. While Tyson, on the other hand, presented a non-approachable all-business persona to reflect the fear he was feeling onto those around him. And it was overalls though, fear, what the? As was evident at the presser yeah. he was out for the fight. Oh, no, we gotta appreciate that. Bro came in with the red cap and like the leather overalls. Were those leather? Those did not look like uh, your normal kind of canvas. That was, what the fuck? Was feeling onto those around him. And Spinks felt that fear. As was evident those are kind of that's kind of crazy. Kinda crazy. The, the man is, is I mean is not cooperative at all. He's not going to stand there and let me just wail away at his you know. Um, whatever he does, I'm confident I'm I'll be successful. Um, I'll say honestly that uh, it, it feels good to have some terror in my life and something to, that that really frightens me. Well. I'm, it's just the majority of it, everything is just bullshit. I just want to fight and as soon as possible. <laughs> Sphinx was an oddball, not easily read from a psychological point of view. However, during the entire build-up to Tyson, something was off. He constantly mentioned the fear of losing and possible retirement, despite being well accomplished, undefeated, and still in his prime years as a heavyweight. You can you can always have your doubts. And, well, that's interesting. And uh, you can even say to yourself that you... I don't, I don't think I'm going to win. Win, 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 win. Oh, no. That's kind of interesting. A little Tyson bit of doubt. Tyson at around 10 p.m. on June 11, 1988, or at least that's how the fans remember. In reality, Team Tyson got to work around 9 p.m., starting off with Kevin Rooney, Tyson's trainer at the time, telling his man that he had just placed both of their purses for the fight on a bet that saw Mike win by first-round knockout. It's unclear whether Tyson thought it to be true, but Rooney later confirmed he did indeed relay that information to Tyson as they prepared backstage. This guy is the strongest, most intimidating fighter since Sonny Liston. As showtime approached, Tyson was set to enter the ring first, but then, in an unprecedented moment of madness, as he walked past Sphinx's locker room, he punched a hole in the wall that shook up everyone nearby. Oh, it is. More so the guys on the other side of the wall. Good man, straight, like, impatient. He's punching, standing there, 
he and Rooney, Rooney's putting something on, he's punching holes in the wall. I'm like, to myself, oh no. <laughs> this guy oh is God. Fight my guy, my oh little God. guy. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> he, uh, that was probably his actual, like, man probably did have a napkin fucking sweating. Just, oh, God. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> that was, that's probably actually what he was doing. Um, oh, no. I mean, who can blame him? Fuck. I mean, Mike Tyson's in the other room straight pissed off. Punch a hole through the wall and you got to send your boy out there to fucking deal with that fucking thing. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. This guy's getting ready to fight my guy, my little guy. <laughs> right? Like, it's just not the, the situation. It's quite, quite the situation. Oh, no. <laughs> Tyson entered the ring as the undisputed heavyweight champion with a record of 34 0 with 30 knockouts. Spinks entered moments later, also undefeated in 31 fights and recognized as the lineal champion by Ring Magazine. Yet, his aura was that of a man fighting for the first time. Stiff, expressionless, and cold. Uh, he does he not. Shaken up by he don't look like he want to be there, really. But Tyson's intimidating antics before the fight. Michael Spinks, on the other hand, dressed in his uh, white trunks with the black trim, the white shoes, and we're just about ready. Yeah, you got him like bouncing. He looks like he, he's just re waiting. He's been waiting for this shit. He looks like he could wait. He could wait. <laughs> That's like what it kind of looks like. Shit. Like he's looking outside the ring here and shit. That is not a good look. The opening bell. Let's see what's happens. Mike coming out loose. Tyson attacks immediately. Up up. The ring throws a wild right hand, but Tyson walks right through it. Tyson hey. showing no fear, no respect at all here in round one. Absolutely no fear and no respect by Tyson for any jab or anything that Mike Spence can do against the guy that hadn't fought in a long time in Jerry Cooney. The right hand lands to the head of Mike Spence. It's Tyson all the way here in round number one. Vicious shots to the body. Nothing really heavy landing yet, but he's taking them. The uppercut. Hey. Body shots. Down goes. Hey. Mike Spinks. You got the uppercut of the body. It was an erratic start for hey. Tyson as he pounced on a visually shook up Spinks from the get-go, landing short, precise, and powerful hooks that broke his man down in a matter of seconds. That was a body shot that took him down. Here comes Mike Spinks in. He leaves the right hand. Down he goes. I don't think he's he's straight laid him. Mike Spinks is laying flat on his back. That was right on the button. Holy! Ninety-one seconds is all it took for Tyson to dispatch by every metric Golly. possible the greatest threat to his throne across the entire heavyweight landscape, an astronomical feat in boxing history. Nothing makes a more significant statement than a first-round knockout at this level. It was truly the night he became the baddest man on the planet. Mike, congratulations. Did you have any premonition that it would end this fast? My trainer told me before I left, we, I, bet, I, took, I bet both of our person that you knock him out in the first round. So I, had, I thought he was serious, so just now he said he was lying. And so I went out and knocked him out in the first round. Wait, he was lying? Is that what he said? The bet was a lie? that it would end this fast. My trainer told me before I left, we, I, bet, I, took, I bet both of our person that you knock him out in the first round. So I, had, I thought he was serious, so just now he said he was lying. And so I went out and knocked <laughs> oh, him out in the first shit, round. Oh, shit, bro. That's quite the motivation. Fight. The moment you Jeez. contemplate retirement, you're finished. And that was the case for Spinks, who in the direct aftermath called it a day to what was a fantastic career as a whole, but unfortunately overshadowed by a night that every elite boxer fears the most, one where everything goes wrong. And deep down, you know, if you could have dealt with the fear and anxiety in a different way, perhaps the history books would read an entirely alternate story. Only Maybe. you didn't get rid of was Mike Tyson. He I mean, this man looks like he's got quite the attributes to deal with uh, Mike Tyson. He's got the, he's got the reach. He's got the height. It looked like from some of the footage, like he had the drive, you know, had the power. But, uh, yeah, you know, she wasn't meant to be. Knocked you out, 90, uh, yeah, 91 seconds. Have you ever won a hat no. loss? Uh, no, I, I just, uh, <laughs> not, not really, you know. Uh, it, oh, I, that's I, him. I, I lost one time, so I mean, I, I could, I could let, let him have that. I'll never have that. Hmm? Spence yeah, was a brilliant <laughs> fighter with a fascinating career. And that's a story I promise to tell in a future video on this channel, perhaps in a Sphinx v. Holmes recap down the line. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is BLTV Classic, mm. signing off. If you were training Michael Spinks, how would you have him fight Mike Tyson? Yeah, I would say cancel the fight. Unless you plan cancel the fight. <laughs> Shit. Well.
Must have been too late, maybe. Just didn't get the message. That was crazy.